welcome back to the full start in y'all for another video today's video is going to be an upcycle thrift flip boys this is not technically thrift this is more like vintage but what else so today's video i wanted to come in at the beginning to give you guys an intro as to what's happening so i've seen this idea insert photo somewhere and as soon as I seen it, I was like, yep, I want it. I want it. And then I was like, I have the perfect thing for it. The perfect thing. Perfect thing for it. So let's get into it. So a few years ago, a relative, a family friend of mine had a relative that passed away. And she was a fabulous woman who had impeccable style for the 80s and 90s and had a lot of custom garments and sets and pieces and I got a bunch of it. A lot of it being leather. So I have this leather situation. I have a leather actual set. So like, it's upside down. So like the skirt, a vest, and then I have like a, just another random skirt. Okay, the skirts don't fit me. The vest kind of fits, but it's it's kind of it's kind of outdated. It is outdated and not like in a a fun way outdated. This is a hundred percent leather, which is illegal. <laughs> I have some other things from her. If you guys remember my teal leather jacket so the leather jacket had like a um i don't know what it's called a, a badge inside of it and it was like custom made or custom and designed for i can't remember the woman name right now but i would ins i was insert a picture of that badge so she had a lot of her stuff custom made a lot of style this can fit it's just a little tight and snug around my legs and red leather skirts not really my thing so i wanted to take this and give it new life because it's been sitting in my closet sitting in my bin for about four years now and i, I want to give it new life so i see this idea i knew i i knew for sure with the with the uh i knew for sure with the vest i wanted to reuse this to make like an actual leather crop top like my black one that i love so much i have plenty of material to use with i love the different type of lines in it i think they're just going to add to the charm and the characteristic of it and so with the leather skirt i want to do something else that's fun that's different and it's going to be like the perfect like topper or accessory piece to go on any any looks this spring and definitely come fall so if you're interested in see what i create and how i created it then stay tuned. All right, stylers, this is the next day. This is after I went and hid and seen ripped everything. Unfortunately, the second skirt has severely bad um, molding on the inside once I removed the lining. So I had to cut away quite a bit of it. Pulling up my inspiration, this is a item that I found on a blogger. And I love the apron. I love how it's box pleated. And I love how it ties in the back so it looks like a complete apron. Once I had a game plan, I went in here and I sewed together the side seams of a lot of those longer pieces. Um, I, they were about, I want to say 16 inches long. Um, but they wasn't long enough to be a, a full skirt. So once I sewed together those panels, I was able to go in and create the markings to create my box pleats. I made my box pleats about four inches wide, so I went in every two inches and just gathered the, that area together and clipped that with a, a clip instead of using a pen with leather. And I created my four inch pleats. Yeah, I was really sad when I was cutting away that um, lining from that second skirt and saw that majority of that skirt was covered in mold. I I wasn't able to salvage much and then the other skirt had that big old um, beaded um, bedazzle on the front so I was only able to use half of that.
once once I had all my pleats created, I went in carefully and using a um, upholstery stitch. At first, I started with a leather needle, um, but that just created big holes. So I went in and used a upholstery needle to sew down my pleats so that everything is stationary. I will go back and, and you can see me here um, with a towel. I'm going to press my pleats so that they are nice and crisp at the top. Not so much worry about them being um, straight and defined towards the bottom because I want that flare, but definitely want them to be nice and crisp at the top so that they can stay and lay when I start draping this on my dress form. done sewing and cutting and everything I had three panels um, and so you can see me here with my vaccination shots uh, pinning these <laughs> trying to pin this leather to my dress form so I have this main piece here and then I have these two other smaller pieces and what I'm liking is the smaller pieces laying over top of the bigger piece yeah you can see me here struggling with these pins trying to pin through my leather as well as pin through the dress form I just went ahead and let it on and use my clips and just clip the pieces together and then clip the pieces to the inside the opening parts of my dress form so what I'm doing is just finding a style of how I want this to lay making sure that both of those end pieces wrap around to the back side of the dress form which would be the back side of, the, of me evenly so that I can have a clean, cohesive look all the way around. So you can see me here picking stuff up, laying it back down, just playing around with how I want this to look and lay. Hello, fellas! I wanted to interrupt editing Nadia here to interject me, Nadia. I am in the midst of creating something amazing, something that a lot of you have been asking for. I I am in the midst of creating my very own online sewing courses. <laughs> These sewing courses are going to be so educational, so informal, one-on-one um, -on -one personal breakdown of what I am doing, my creative process. I'm going to take you guys shopping and thrifting with me. I'm going to take you guys um, studying fabric and so much more. But before I do all that, I have an important question. How would you like these courses to be formulated? Are you into those smaller bite size segment videos, 10 to 12 minutes, or are you in for the longer videos that can be anywhere between 20, 30 minutes or 45 minutes? Please let me know. I wanna know what I can do for you guys. Are you into binge watching them all together? Or would you rather come back and revisit so along? What you into? Let me know because I definitely want to do this with you guys in mind because you guys have been the ones that have been rocking with me since the beginning. So I want to make sure that you guys are thought of doing this creative process, doing this building and creating and formulating online sewing courses for the full starting family as well as the creative family. Let me know what you guys think. Love to hear your input. Please comment in the description box below. Let me know what you think. All right, getting back. Once I'm satisfied, I do go in and measure. I do go in and measure with measuring tape how far those the end pieces are from each other. So I know how much of the waistband I need to extend out as well as where exactly it sits and hits on the front. So once I'm happy with how everything looks, I'm playing around with the waistband, trying to decide how wide I want my waistband to be. I will be having to cut multiple pieces of fabric to create a, a, strip, a strip of fabric that is long enough to extend all the way around me and to give me room to close at the back. So you can see me here with the pieces of scrap fabric that are not intended for the top and I'm going to measure out about four and a half to five inches wide fabric so that I can have a four inch wide um, waistband and then have that half an inch to use for seam allowance to one attach the skirt and then the other half to fold over. You 
can see me here marking out my seam allowance so that it can be even all the way around and I do go ahead and press this so that when I attach it um, so that when I'm pressing it it is able to just easily attach and fold over like I said I had to cut out multiple pieces because I didn't have one long piece that was enough to create a long waistband so once I've done that I went ahead and sewed those pieces together pressing down that fold over so once I've done that I laid these pieces out and decided which ones which piece I wanted to be the front and the side so that I didn't have a whole bunch of smaller pieces I had one long piece that can be that go across the front and then the smaller pieces can vary around to the back side and then I cut one of these pieces in half to go towards the end so that that can be my fold over so that I can add my snaps. Once I finish that, I sew these pieces right sides together so that I can go on back into the skirt and sewing down those panels where they overlap. All right, you can see me here attaching the waistband to the apron. Um, I'm just bending over the access to give myself access to give the clips access to clip both the waistband and the skirt together And I'm here taking my time. I wish I would have used my walking foot I felt like this fabric wasn't thick enough for that But the way leather wanted to move around honey child And then you can see me here finishing off that raw edge of the waistband and finally struggling to attach these clapped struggling to attach these snaps to the ends of the waistbands for the back So yes, that's it guys. That is the final look of this piece. I love this. This is so freaking dope. She is a statement piece. She is the perfect thing to go over a basic look or a simple look or to elevate a look to a next level. You can definitely dress her down. You can definitely dress her up. This is going to be something that's going to carry you through. And trust and believe, honey, you will be able to bust this right on out once again come the fall time. I cannot wait to throw her over a blazer or a coat. Oh, darling. You guys let me know what you think. Remember that you are loved. You are worthy to be loved. But always remember to love yourself fully. Until next time.